It was pure chaos at the NBA trade deadline and we gotta start off with my Knicks because I'm ready to explode. They got Boyan Bogdanovic, a phenomenal scorer, 20 points per game, shooting lights out from downtown, 41.5%. In the package is Alec Burks as well, who's also on fire this season from outside. And all that New York had to give up was Quentin Grimes, some non-rotation players and two second round picks. Are you kidding me? They didn't give up a single first round pick for one of the hottest targets in this trade deadline. Literally the entire league was hoping to get Bogdanovic. All of a sudden, the Knicks became a top 5 deepest team in the league. This rotation is absolutely packed. The only thing that the Knicks were missing was depth. And right now they're deeper than the Pacific Ocean and everybody else in the Eastern Conference need to get life jackets, including the Boston Celtics. Bogdanovic can create for himself which will greatly reduce the load off of Brunson and Randall. These two have been great this season but relying solely on them as the primary weapons would have been a lot for the playoffs. Now this is a whole different situation. And yeah, the Knicks are dealing with some injuries at the moment like Randall's shoulder and Brunson's ankle tweak from last game, but all of this is short term. And if they get back one of the best rim protectors and offensive rebounders and Mitchell Robinson before the playoffs, which is according to all expectations within the team, then this was a move to put them in the Eastern Conference Finals in May. And I cannot believe I'm saying this. Let's go! Moving on. OKC pulled the trigger on a win now move and traded for Gordon Hayward. This may not be talked about a lot but it can end up being crucial for the Western Conference playoffs. After their shockingly amazing start, the Thunder found themselves in a bit of a dilemma. Do they let this young team develop and ride out this season or do they maybe push for a bigger move to try and go all the way this year? They picked the latter and now all of a sudden it makes them even more dangerous in the West. I'm sure that much like Bogdanovic, Gordon Hayward will be extremely fired up to play on a contender after literally rotting in Charlotte for years. Gordon is a dynamic scorer that can create his own shot and can get them buckets from inside and out. OKC is giving up close to nothing in this trade and they could re-sign Hayward after this season as he's on an expiring contract. Dallas also did a lot this trade deadline as they acquired Daniel Gafford from the Wizards and PJ Washington from Charlotte. Not only has Gafford been extremely solid for the Wizards but he's a great fit in Dallas, a phenomenal lob catcher and a terrific screen setter, so the pick and roll game with Luka is going to be flawless. Along with Lively, the Mavs now have two good pieces at center, improving the depth a lot. And the addition of PJ Washington only goes further in solidifying the depth of this team. With 13.5 points per game and 5 rebounds, PJ is a clear upgrade on offense over Grant Williams. This is a guy that can put the ball on the floor and doesn't depend on just kickouts like Williams. He will provide a boost helping Luka and Kyrie and the change of scenery now playing with superstars can only be positive for him. The Sixers also made a nice move going for a trade rumor veteran Buddy Heald. He is finally traded after at least two years of constant talks about him. And to me, he's in a great place. Philly is 27th near the bottom of the league in 3 point makes and we know how much their GM Daryl Morey likes that shot. So this was a good acquisition. And looking at what they had to give up for him, it's clear that the real price for Hilt are these 3 second round picks that Indiana would use in the future. The Pacers weren't going to re-sign Buddy as they have a few younger players similar to him. But did they really have to trade him to a team that they're battling right now for seeding? They could easily meet in the playoffs so this was not ideal for them but overall it's a positive move for both teams. Indy did however bring in a shooter getting Doug McDermott from the Spurs for one second round pick in return. So overall this gives them back the shooter on the roster and now they have two more second rounders than they had yesterday. So good move. This whole chaos is making me giggle and Patrick Beverly is definitely adding fuel to the fire. The dude broke his own trade on Twitter. Take that Woj and Shams, this is Pat Bev bomb. Anyway, this is interesting because I remember Beverly telling a story of how Giannis himself wanted him on the Bucks. Giannis was walking out the locker room. Greek, what up G? Yeah, I like you, I like you Pat, I like you, I like you, you want to win championship? You know, I like you. You come to Milwaukee, Pat. I like you. I'm not fuck that. You come, to, you come to Minnesota. No, 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 no. Never come here, Pat. But yeah, I like you. It walked off. Now, I'm not sure that Dame is too happy with this trade. See, they've had a lot of back and forth between them, including scuffles, trolling, and going at each other in press conferences. 
This was after the Lillard miss, Morris and Beverly reacting. But Beverly has been on fire today on social media, so he posted a video saying that he will patch things up with Dame. No, I gotta get my relationship right with Dame. <laughs> gotta get my relationship right with Dame, man. Time with the championship. This move doesn't do a ton for Milwaukee, but since we've all been criticizing their perimeter defense, at least they got a guy that's going to compete on that end of the floor. So, after all the Lakers rumors and talks about how they need to go for DeJounte or Levine or a shooter, this guy, that guy, at the end they stayed put. Denver also decided to defend the title with the guys that they have, but we saw a lot of guys changing teams and this could have a huge impact come playoff time. Thing is, I talked about a bunch of these moves in my trade deadline analysis and predictions video that you can check out right here. Talk to you in the next one, peace out.